My name is Thomas Schmidt from the Media Informatics Group of the University of Regensburg in Germany and I present a short paper about the results of a motion annotation in German drama from, from 1650 to 1815. My co-authors are Katrin Dennerlein from the University of Würzburg and my supervisor Christian Woll. The results of this abstract are an output of the research project Emotions in Drama, in short Emo Drama in which we intend to apply computational emotion classification to analyze historical German plays from 1650 to 1815. This specific presentation will focus on the subtask of annotation and the creation of annotated corpora, but of course in the grand scheme of our project we also do train and apply large language models with the annotations we created to analyze uh, topics like genre comparisons, anthropological changes, and gender. Now first we will take a look at the annotation scheme according to which we annotate it. Overall we define emotion as a generic term for a character state of mind that is expressed through written language. As you can see this scheme is structured in a hierarchical sense consisting of certain sub-emotions which are finally the emotions we use to annotate and these emotions sum up to six main classes, or more precisely four classes, and two special cases. And on the highest level, um, all sub-emotions can be summed up to polarity, um, meaning if an emotion is rather positive or negative. As main classes, we have the emotions of affection, like love and desire, the emotions of fear, fear, despair, emotions of pleasure, like joy and schadenfreude, emotions of suffering, suffering, compassion, and the emotions of rejection, anger, and abhorrence. We also have the special case of being moved, uh, which is a specific emotion used for um, emotional movement and more generic emotional um, affection. Now, as you can see, we differ quite largely from more general emotion schemes in the sense of psychology since we include um, more abstract concepts like suffering or love. However, these emotional concepts are of great importance for the literary history of the time we look at and um, therefore also are of up utmost interest for literary studies. Now this is a list of all 18 plays we finally annotated in a span of uh, one or two years. We annotated this these plays in their entirety according to our scheme and annotation process. As you can see, the list includes very well-known classics like Faust by Goethe or Minna von Barnheim by Lessing, but also some rather non-canonical works like Kasperl plays by Ferdinand Eber, which, while not equally famous, they were very popular at the time and thus are important for the overall understanding of dramatic texts during these periods. The plate itself were mostly taken in their XML form from the platform Gerd Rakor, but also TextGrid. They were further prepared for the specific annotations. Um, and they, as you can see, already included some structural information, but we also added um, additional information depending on the task. Uh, for example, we added some gender information for older and unique plays of our corpus, so they were usable for our specific um, project. The annotation itself was performed context dependent, meaning the annotators have to take into account the entire content and the meaning of a play and what a character really wants to express. The annotators um, can annotate as much or as few texts as they feel appropriate with a specific emotion. And furthermore, annotations can also be overlapping. So when you look at this example, the annotator annotated two lines as suffering and at the end of this line as love, and uh, this is valid according to our annotation scheme and process. The annotators were trained um, and had access to annotation guidelines. We annotated the emotions, characters of the play experience themselves, so not the emotion of the recipient or something else. Uh, and one play was annotated by two student assistants independently from each other according to the guidelines. Now, looking at the final corpus we were able to gather, we were able to gather around 21,000 single emotion annotations of varied length. 
So overall, and one emotion annotation was about two to three sentences. Looking at emotion distributions, we identified that around 54% of all annotations are negative, and the most frequent sub-emotions are indeed suffering and law. However, we also identified some sub-emotions that proved to be not annotated a lot, like for example desire, friendship, and schadenfreude. These are specific emotions that are only important for very specific epochs and, and genres. Now we also looked at inter-rater agreement. We calculated this uh, agreement speech base. So that means we assigned the emotion that was annotated the most to a single utterance, a so-called speech, to a character per annotator. And then we calculated the agreements uh, in comparison to the two annotators. Now overall, as you can see, the agreement is rather mediocre to low with kappa values ranging from 0.5 to 0.4. So while there is usage for these kind of annotations, um, we also decided that we prepare a filtered corpus removing the disagreeing annotations to improve the overall valid validity and consistency of our corpus. So this filtered corpus only contains annotations both annotators agree upon, but also annotations by a single annotator that are not in conflict with another emotion annotation by the partner annotator. All, annot all annotations the annotator disagree upon, however, being it fully, fully or partially, are excluded. Now overall this corpus, this filtered sub-emotion corpus, offers a more valid and usable view of our emotion annotations and also proved to be beneficial for machine learning tasks. Um, since obviously we remove inner inconsistencies, which is always good for models. If we take a look at this filtered sub-emotion corpus, we also um, added non-annotated text to this corpus. This was also a task that improved machine learning results. Um, adding this material to this filtered corpus shows that it makes about 48% of all text. So all so around half of the text is not annotated with emotions. Furthermore, the removal of disagreeing emotions reduces the overall emotion annotations by around 40%. So disagreement uh, among annotators is a significant number. The remaining annotations distributions, however, do, of course, stay quite similar. So what are the overall contributions of the annotation process of our project. Um, the main contributions are that we offer a unique and large language resource for historical and poetic German language for this time frame of 1615 to 1815. The corpora will be published in J JSON and CSV format uh, and we will also include um, a further information because while this presentation was focused on the emotion annotations, we also did annotate the source and the target of the emotions. We also published various versions of the corpora, as already shown, filtered according to different mechanics that might be useful for different purposes. Overall, this resource is, in our opinion, interesting for any form of annotation and language analysis in this context of, of historical language, of poetic language, um, and of course, it is uh, especially beneficial for, for as, as training material for machine learning algorithms in this context of sentiment and emotion analysis. Now, if you're interested in two other aspects of our project, we will reference certain papers at the end of the presentation. For example, um, going into the machine learning results, we were able to achieve accuracies of up to 73% for sub-emotion classifications, um, single label classification for 14 classes with large transformer-based language models. We also explored possibilities of optimizations to the historical language. On the application side of our project, when we have our trained models and we apply them on our texts of place, we um, predominantly focus on genre analysis However, um, another small snippet of research comparing stage directions with spoken text can be seen here 
reapplied our trained models on a corpus of over 200 plays and identified that indeed spoken text includes significantly more emotions than stage directions. Now we invite you to find more information of our project in other papers we listed here. And other than that, we would like to thank you for your attention and are looking forward to your feedback and your questions. Thank you.